In this video, we're going to go over chapter one, section one, inductive and deductive reasoning. Now, we use this all the time when we're thinking about what are we going to wear when we wake up to you see a situation where you need to uh, figure out an answer to a problem. All right. So let's start off with the first one, which is inductive reasoning. So inductive reasoning. is the process of arriving at a general conclusion based on observations of specific examples all right so a great example would be something like let's say you want to buy somebody a gift and that gift happens to be a movie all right like let's, let's say you want to take them out to a movie all right well if this person that you want to take out to the movie let's say they really like Let's say they really like romantic comedies, all right? So the reason why you figured this out, how you knew that, is you would ask them, hey, what are your favorite movies? And then they would go ahead and give you a couple really funny or a couple examples of romantic comedies. And unfortunately, I am currently Googling some romantic comedy movies because I have no idea. I, I'm sure I know what they are. All right, so let's see here. Um, I don't know. These all look so bad. How to lose a guy in 10 days. The proposal. Just married. No hard feelings. And I am literally just Googling this right now. So what I'm trying to say here is because this person liked these movies, maybe you should, maybe you would suggest that a great movie to go watch would be When Harry Met Sally, because that is another romantic comedy. So that is an, that's an example of inductive reasoning the observations where you asked your friend what kind of movies do they like and then you've then you uh, came to a conclusion based on the um, movie itself now more specifically let's say we were talking about like math in general all right like what would be a really good example of uh, inductive inductive reasoning in math well let's say you went ahead and you did these three problems right here you said 23 plus 42, and you did this problem and turned out to be 65. Then the next one you said was 10 plus 41. You came up with 51. And then the last one, let's say you did 30 plus 66, and you came up with 96. So maybe, just maybe, someone would say, the sum of any two digit numbers is another two digit number. And the reason why we're saying that is because in each one of these examples, we started with a two-digit number, we added it to another two-digit number, and our answer was a two-digit number. Now, even though this is exactly what inductive reasoning is, all right, this is where we have to be careful because this is a major flaw within inductive reasoning. All right, a flaw is that the observations made may lead us to an incorrect conclusion, all right? And the reason for that would be right here, and this is called a counterexample. All right, 
So, like I said, let's say we had a friend and they did these three problems at the top of the screen here. And they came up with this conclusion right here. The sum of any two-digit numbers is another two-digit number. And you sat there and you thought to yourself and you went, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That, I don't know if that's correct. And then they came back and said, well, prove me wrong then. Here's what you would do. You would say, well, I'm going to provide you with a counterexample. And here's my counterexample. What if I added 88 plus 91? Now, when you add these two numbers together, 8 and 1 is 9, and 8 and 9 is 17. Here is a counterexample. And this disproves or demonstrates why their conclusion was incorrect. Okay? So, inductive reasoning is the process of arriving, arriving at a general conclusion based on observations of specific examples. The flaw, those observations may lead you to an incorrect conclusion. How do we demonstrate that? Provide a counterexample. All right? So it's really straightforward when you think about it. All right? Another way that we use inductive reasoning, and this is very popular in math, is by finding patterns. We try to do this all the time in math. In fact, I, I could argue that math is really just the process of finding patterns in general. All right? Like, for example... Some of us may have seen this before, like y equals mx plus b. It's an equation of a line. All right? And what makes this so special is that the variables, x and y, are both raised to the first power. That's what makes it a line. All right? So I could give you something like this and say, and say, go ahead and solve for y. And what you would do is you would go ahead and solve for y, but notice the process in which you would do this, the technique that you've learned is a pattern. All right? And the reason why is because this y and that x are both raised to the first power. So for those of you wondering what you would do is you would distribute the 2 first and then you would add the 3 to both sides. And there's your equation of the line. But in order for us to do this, all right, in order for us to do this, we had a pattern that, 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 that mathematicians have developed over time. To keep this nice and simple, all right, and this is also going to be in your homework, uh, I'm going to provide you with a couple of patterns in general. So, like, here's one right here. We're going to try to find the pattern here. All right, we're going to try to find this next number. Now, when we look at this initially, 3, 4, 6, 9, 13, 18, nothing really jumps out at me, all right? But if you if you just dive down a little deeper here, okay, maybe you should ask yourself, okay, well, if I'm starting off at the number 3, how can I get the number 4, all right? Well, you would add 1. Now, how do you go from 4 to 6? Well, to go from 4 to 6, you would add 2. To go from 6 to 9, you add 3. To go from 9 to 13, you add 4. And notice now we're developing a pattern. It looks like the next number, the next number is always going to be an addition of a previous number plus one more. So 13 to 15 would be plus 5. Therefore, the next number has to be plus 6. And 18 plus 6 is going to be 24. So sometimes the pattern will be kind of hidden. Other times the pattern is real simple to see. And 
like in this example here, zero, two, four, six, many of you are probably just sitting there saying, well, the next one's going to be 10 because these are even numbers because we just add two to go to each one. But the pattern doesn't always have to be an addition. For example, it could be something like this. Mm, let me think about this. All right, so we have one, one half, one fourth, one eighth, one sixteenth. And when we think about this, many of us are already sitting there going, well, you're just multiplying everything by two or you're doubling it. A lot of people say double it. And that's not right. We got to be really careful with this. All right. Because with this, the easy one, in my opinion, is the one half. And how do we get the one fourth? Well, that would be one half times one half. All right. How do we get the one eighth? That would be one half times one half times one half. How do we get the one sixteenth? Well, that would be one half times one half times one half times one half. So the next one has to just be the pattern would be multiply by another one half. So one half times one half times one half times one half times one half, times one half or 1 over 32. But like I said, it's the very start of this where I really want you to think about well, what's really what you know what's really happening here. How do we get one? Well, if you remember, anything raised to the zero power is one. Now, how does that relate to everything else we have? Well, if this is one half to the zero, then this would be one half to the first. The next number is one half to the second because you have two of them. The next one would be one half to the third. Next would be one half to the fourth. And finally, our last one is one half to the fifth. So you will see stuff like this, okay? Just a matter of finding these patterns. To help practice. That is really what really helps with this is practice, okay? The last example I want to go over that deals with, <clears throat> with um, inductive reasoning, okay, would be something like using patterns in objects. So something like, here's a circle with an X. And we have three dots in the far left, two in the bottom, one on the right. Then we have a square with an X. And here we have three dots, two dots, and then one dot. Next, we have another circle with an X. We have three dots, two dots, and one dot. One more, we have another square where we have three dots, two dots, and then one dot. And the question would be, what's the last one? Well, first, there are two things happening. We have alternating shapes, circle, square, circle, square. So this one should be a circle. And next, if you look at the dots, it's like they're kind of just moving in a counterclockwise position where each time they just take over the next spot. So since I have three dots here, two dots here and one dot here, when I go to draw my X, my three dots have to move back over into here, then two dots below and one dot to the right. Deductive reasoning is the process of proving a specific conclusion from one or more 
<clears throat> general statements. All right, a conclusion. that is proved to be true by deductive logic or deductive reasoning, sorry, is called a theorem. And we use theorems all the time in math, all the time, all right? One of the most e or one of, one of the one of the most easiest theorems to kind of demonstrate that works would be this right here: a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which is the Pythagorean theorem. Now I can demonstrate how what you know this this theorem visually by using a right triangle. where we have the sides three, four, and five. <clears throat> what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna draw squares. Because remember, this is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So I'm gonna draw the squares. So if this side of the triangle here is three, then the square associated with it is a three by three, all right? And if this side right here is four, then, and sorry, it's supposed to be a square. It's not exactly the best. But this would be a four by four, which makes this side, our, our hypotenuse or the longest side, I'm try to draw this as nice as I can. Sorry, I'm not an artist. But this would be a five by five. So one, two, three, four, five, four, five, and one, two, three, four. Okay. Kind of clean this up a little bit. But the most important part is this. When I add up the two sides, remember, a squared plus b squared, right? So when I add up these two sides, I have exactly one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. I have twenty-five squares. And when you look at the opposite side, which is the c squared part, that's what this is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. And that is why the Pythagorean theorem works. And I used deductive reasoning for this. I said, well, this is a 3 by 3. This is a 4 by 4. So this has to be a 5 by 5 because the two sides have to total or add up to equal the other one. So like I said, this is the one I think students are most familiar with without even really recognizing <clears throat> that, that you see this, all right? So what I'd like to do is uh, I wanna do another example here, all right? And I'm just gonna pull one out of, out of your homework. We are going to select a number Uh, once we select it, we're going to multiply the number by 4. Then we're going to add 8 to the product. Finally, we're going to divide oops, this sum. by two, and lastly, subtract four from the quotient. All right, so 
it seems like there's a lot going on here, but it just like any word problem, let's take it one sentence at a time. First thing we're going to do, select a number. Well, I'm going to pick my favorite number, 11. Next, we're going to multiply the number by 4. Now, this is going to be a product. So, 4 times 11 equals 44. 3, we're going to add 8 to the product. So, let's add 8. So, 44 plus 8 equals 52. Oops, wrong color. Step four, we're going to divide this sum by two. So divide by two. So 52 divided by two is 26. And then finally, subtract four from the quotient. So 26 minus 4 equals 22. And all we, all we did here was just follow the directions. And hopefully you're sitting there going, why, did you, why didn't you write them in red? Because I'm going to do it right now. So 52 divided by 2, 26. 26 minus 4, 22. All right, so there's our first example. But <clears throat> maybe we want to generalize this. So what I mean by that, I'm going to select the letter N, or the number N. N could be any number I want it to be, right? So how do we do this? Well, select the number. The number is N. Multiply it by 4. 4 times N. Add 8. 4 times N plus 8. Divide by 2. Now, you got to be careful. Because when you go back up and you look at the directions, okay, it says divide this sum by 2. So it's the entire sum divided by 2, all right? And we can simplify that a little bit. Because when you divide it by 2, you can separate that. And 4 divided by 2 is 2 times n plus 8 divided by 2 is 4. And finally, we can subtract 4 from this. So there's 2n plus 4. Here's my minus 4 equals 2n. Pretty interesting, huh? And when you think about what I did previously, remember this 2 times n. Watch. Here's what we did in the previous example. We selected a number. 11. We multiplied it by 4. We added 8 to it. We divided it by 2. And then we subtracted it by 4. So if I would have just taken the number 11 and just multiplied it by 2 at the very start, I would have got my end result. And this is what we try to do in math. All right, this is why, I don't know if you remember, but all those times you were like, how do you simplify this? Always write fractions in its simplest form. That's because we are trying to find the most <clears throat> efficient way to get to the answer. And that's going to be it for this video. So, see you in the next one.